Hi everyone and welcome again. Today we're going to start solving questions of lesson number six of Codility Exercises. And we're starting with counting the distinct values in an array. In brief, in this example, we are given an array and we have to count the total number of distinct values, meaning we have to discard the values that are repeated more than once. To make things clearer, we're going to explain the provided example. So this is the array and we're going to check each element. So the first we have the number two, and this is the first occurrence of this number. Then we have the number one, and this is the first time we see number one in the array. Then we have one more occurrence of uh, the number one, so this one will be uh, disregarding. And the number two again, so we don't need it. We already saw it here. And a new number, number three. And then a third occurrence of the number one, which we will also disregard. So we have to have a variable, a counter, let's call it C. And for each first occurrence of a number, we're going to increment this counter. So C starts equal to one because we will have at least one number in the array. And then every time we're gonna see a new occurrence or a new number, new value, we're going to increment our counter by one. And here our counter will be equal to three because so far we have three new numbers. And in total, we have three distinct values, which will be our final result, the return value of our function. Now, interestingly, using Python, this question could be solved with less than 10 seconds, and I'm going to show you how. But first, we're going to start by explaining the algorithm to better understand what's going on. So we can, of course, start using a brute approach where I consider all the possible integers that might be in the array, and I'm going to test each integer occurrences inside of the array. For example, we have no occurrence of the zero value, but then we have the number one, the number two, and the number three. So in total, we have three different distinct values. The problem with this approach is that we don't know the limits of our search. So where do we have to start with which integer and what is the highest integer that we want to reach? We could, for example, take minus one million to plus one million as two limits, because these are the limits as described by the problem on the Codility website. But we can notice immediately that testing 2 million integers going from minus 1 million to plus 1 million for small arrays is a big waste of time. And even for large arrays, you don't have to test all of these numbers. Actually, it's the worst method you could think of in the sense that it is the least efficient. Then we could propose to use the minimum and the maximum value of the array. It's an improvement because it might limit our area of search, but in many cases it would also turn into a very inefficient solution. Take for example this particular case where you have an array of only two elements, minus one million and plus one million. So this is the minimum and this is the maximum. And then you go back to testing all the integers between these two numbers. So you have to test two million integers to analyze an array of only two elements. So this one also we're going to drop and we move for a more efficient approach. We can start by sorting the array in increasing order and then we create a counter variable initialized at one. And for every different consecutive elements, we increment our counter by one because in this case we are reading a new distinct value. So here our counter is equal to one at first, then two, then we have two different elements again, so our counter will be equal to three. And this is our final result because we've reached the end of our array. But we can see immediately that no matter the size or the composition of the array, we have to sort it and then read it only once. And this is why the solution is more efficient. There is no redundancy or repeated read or write operations. So our algorithm will look like this. First, the sorting of the array then a for loop where for each element of the array we're going to test if ai is different than the element ai plus one and if it's the case then we're going to increment a counter c plus equal to one and when we have tested all the elements of the array we can simply return c as our final result now let's go and see how to write this in c plus plus and in python and how to solve this in python with almost two lines of codes in less than 10 seconds so this is our solution function. It takes one parameter, the vector a. We start by testing if the vector is empty. And if it's the case, we return zero because we have no distinct values inside the array. Then we can use the sort function from the algorithm library that is included up here. And we are basically sorting our array in increasing order at this stage. 
Next, we declare the distinct values counter, integer c starting at 1, because we have now at least one distinct value. And we loop over the elements of the array to check if ai is different than ai minus 1. If it's the case, we increment our counter by 1. And notice that we started at value index 1 because we are testing ai and ai minus 1. And we don't want to exceed the starting boundary of uh, the array. So since we are using ai minus 1, the lowest value of i should be equal to 1. Just an edge case to take into account. And then we reach the end of the array. We can simply return the variable c, which value is the number of distinct integers in the array a. The solution in Python can be written in a very similar way. First, we check if the list a is empty, in which case the function should return 0. If not, then we sort a using the sort function and we initialize the counter variable at 1. Then we use a for loop to check the values of the array and compare ai with ai minus 1. If it's the case, we increment our counter by 1, and when we reach the end of the array, we can return c as our final result. Now, there is a different way to do this in Python using a built-in functions. It's not the purpose of this exercise. However, it's good to mention it here because it also shows one of the powerful features of Python. We can simply cast the list a into a set using the set function a equals set of a and for those who are new to python sets are non-ordered containers that can only hold one copy of each value so when i cast my list into a set all the duplicates are automatically erased and we end up with a container where each element is distinct or unique so we can simply return the length of a at this stage and that's it actually, two lines of code and we're done, didn't even take two seconds. It would surely give you 100% score. So that's it, that's all I have to tell you about this problem. Hope you guys liked it, stay tuned for more and happy coding.